good evening. Tonight I'm doing a marker test with pit pins. And I have a new case for them. Can finally hold them all. Pit pins on vellum. And um, you can get vellum at an art store. I happened to get this particular vellum at Michael's. It was sold in 12 by 12 sheets. Uh, but I happen to know that the Jerry's Artorama in Nashville, Tennessee sells uh, designer's vellum. Let me see if I can find my pack. I just picked one up the other night. Well, it's not handy, but they sell designer's vellum. Um, and I'll probably be reviewing that at some point too. So, um, if you've been watching these videos, you'll know that I recently did a test of pit pins on um, U transparent Yupo. And that looks like, let's see, like this. So no color migration, unlike the water-based markers on transparent Yupo. And I've also used water-based markers to great effect, well, I like the effect, um, on vellum, which, may, which is why I kind of think pit pens will handle well on it, as well as pigment markers and alcohol markers, which tend to just sit on top. For blending, I'm going to attempt to blend with a Tombow ABT marker. And I have marker swatches right here that will probably end up being off camera for you guys most of the time, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. So I'm gonna start with 114, which is light flesh. There we go. To apply a base layer on her skin. And I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Now the key to blending with pit pens is you need to do your blending while the pit pen is still wet. So papers with a surface coating like this vellum um, sort of lend themselves to this sort of artwork or on um, this material. Now pet pen, pit pins, like most water-based markers, and they are a water-based marker, um, they have a tendency to tear up or pill your paper if you're applying wet onto wet. So if you are blending, do be careful not to abrade your surface. Um, vellum tends to be pretty good about not being too easy to abrade. So um, Vellum and Yupo should be good picks, but that's why we're doing this paper test to find out if Vellum and Yupo really are uh, good papers for your pit pens. And so far it's going on very smoothly. It's staying wet just long enough that I can blend it, so that's nice. And it's soaking into the paper a little faster than it did when I was using the Yupo, which is good because it seemed to stay wet forever, which was negatively impacting my ability to lay down color. And I just wanted to make a little announcement. It will have been up probably about a month, maybe late longer than that by the time this video is uploaded. But yesterday, I finally bit the bullet and I launched my Patreon. So if you enjoy this kind of content, uh, if you find it helpful or useful, in addition to subscribing and liking my videos, if you've enjoyed my content for a long time or you can see yourself enjoying and benefiting from the content I produce for a long time, um, I would sincerely appreciate it if you took a moment to check out my Patreon page and maybe consider subscribing. Your financial contributions are going to go to um, helping me produce future great content. And I have a six year track record already so if uh, you are new to my work 
and you'd like to learn more, you can peruse this channel or you can visit my blog. And I have some big plans in store, but they're predicated upon you guys showing some support. And um, subscribing starts at $2. And $2 entitles you to any of the community goals outlined. Uh, I'm really big on keeping or providing um, sort of egalitarian art education. And I didn't want my Patreon to uh, prevent people from being able to access content. So... Mm, the only things that are going to be going up behind a paywall are going to be additional content um, or content that I'd already mentioned was going to be going up behind a Patreon paywall. So the Art Snack Sketchbox reviews, those start at $15 a month. And that means if my total contributions are $15 or more, everyone will have access to those videos. If it's less than that, it means only patrons will have access to those videos. And depending on how Patreon is set up, I'm going to try to um, make that content accessible uh, like when you subscribe. So a subscriber would have access to the back uh, catalog as well is what my goal is. Um, and if I can't do that, I'll figure out a way to do that. Okay, so I've got a base coat of pit pen on her skin. And um, when I'm applying color, I am using the tip for detail and the side, oh, the tip for detail and the side of it for larger areas. And the brush pin makes that a lot easier than a bullet nib would. And since it's already dry, I'm going to build up color in some areas sort of like the shadows on her face, for example. And see, once you've, um, I have found that once the pit pin is dry, it is pretty much permanent and you can use the Tombow ABT to continue blending if you so desire. But really, um, I just enjoy using it as a means of transitioning between um, my lightest color and the white of the paper. And um, the vellum has been taped on top of a piece of sketchbook paper. That way the pit pen ink isn't affecting the ink I use underneath. And the two are going to be assembled in Photoshop. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on that, leave a comment and let me know. And I will add that to the list of potential unlockables for the Patreon. Now, pit pins um, online, they can get a little pricey. Uh, the best price I found was, I think, on Dick Blick's website. I'd have to double check, and I will <laughs> double check when I'm writing the description for this post. So please check my description for um, the lowest price I could find at the time. Uh, I've been assembling my collection from various sources. Uh, my local Jerry's, ha they're kind of expensive at Jerry's. They're expensive on Amazon. And I found myself less than thrilled with the assembled sets, especially when it comes to skin tone, with the exception being the six piece skin tone set seems all right. But in general, the generic uh, multicolor sets tend to be about representing a rainbow of colors rather than representing um, the colors you'll need for realistic rendering. So I'm gonna let that dry. On the vellum, it looks a little more pink and saturated than it did on the Yupo. And that's what it looks like on its own. Now vellum uh, has some very lovely properties. Um, it is translucent to the point uh, or transparent, you can get a little more opaque than this. So um, what you could do, for example, if you're a stamper, is you can stamp on one side, flip it over, render on the back, um, and it'll show through. And it's not gonna show through like you were rendering on a plastic, like a clear plastic, but it's gonna have sort of this lovely, soft quality to it, and the ink won't affect the ink you used on your stamp. So if um, that's a concern for you, interference with um, your stamps, 
vellum, you can turn the paper over and work on the back. Now I'm using medium flesh to start putting in some blush. And I will use my Tombow ABT, which I need a new one. It's getting, mine's getting grungy and beaten up. And I would have picked one up at Jerry's, but they were sold out of the colorless blender. So somebody's figured out that those things are great. Someone other than me. I don't particularly care for the Tombow ABTs more so than other uh, water-based markers, but I really like the blending marker. I think it's one of the better water-based blending markers. And see, with a light and gentle hand, you can blend. There, I'll zoom in for you guys. You can blend out using the ABT on top of already applied layers, just as long as the ink you've put down isn't dry yet. See, that's the limiting factor is dry time. So to use these and to get them to blend smoothly, you need to use a paper that's going to resist absorbing the marker. Um, so when I was working on this, on the pit pen portion of the series, I saw a lot of people claiming that these blend like Copics and then a lot of people getting upset because they don't blend like Copics. They don't blend like Copics because Copics are alcohol-based markers, and these are a water-based marker that's permanent once dry, and they behave very differently. And the way you blend these kind of products is very different than the way you would blend an alcohol marker. With these, um, your blender is absorbing some of the color and pushing it to new areas. Uh, everything is sitting on the surface, at least on papers like this and on Ubo. With alcohol markers, what, what is happening is um, your colorless blender, in most applications, your colorless blender is pushing your, your color, your marker to the back of the paper. So you can apply new colors on top. Now with water-based markers, especially India ink markers that are permanent when they're dry, um, what you're really working with are layers of transparency and that gives a blended effect. Whereas with alcohol markers, uh, alcohol markers will remain reworkable pretty much indefinitely with the exception of like Sharpies or other arguably not for art purpose markers. Um, they will remain uh, workable indefinitely and you can continue to um, apply color and it'll blend out by virtue of how the markers work. So alcohol-based markers do a lot of your blending for you. Water-based markers, you're in charge of what blends where and how. So um, if you're an illustrator who's frustrated with how your alcohol markers tend to um, become desaturated with various layers, and I'm, I'm one of those artists, um, I have found that using a combination of watercolor and alcohol-based markers or even permanent water, I, yeah, no, alcohol, I'm sorry, alcohol and watercolor, combination of alcohol and watercolor or using um, a combination of alcohol markers and water-based markers because they don't, they don't activate each other. So I'm using uh, 132 Light Flesh to add some shadows to her skin right now. Sorry. Uh, trying to explain the how these work to you guys so that you guys can um, not only do what I'm doing, but apply the knowledge to your next project in a way that works for you, but also demonstrate what I'm doing. Because I don't, I honestly do not want you guys like copying my techniques, not because I'm threatened, but because I want you to find your own techniques that work for your work. If an adaptation of something I've shown you helps you, I'm all for that. But I want you guys to find stuff that makes your work shine. And the only way you can do that, in my opinion, is if you play around with the materials, if you understand how the materials work, 
if your expectations are accurate. If you're going into this thinking these are going to blend like alcohol markers, you're going to be upset. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to feel like your money was wasted. You might not give these great pen slash markers another shot. But if you go in understanding their limitations, understanding their uses, understanding where they excel, then you're going to be able to make a better looking piece from the start. I mean, I know, I know there are craft bloggers who always use, they always recommend the same blends over and over again. Um, and that's, that's great if you always want to render Caucasian people or blonde people or you know what I mean like when you're always using the same blends and the same techniques you're only going to be able to render one or two kinds of people um but I want you guys even though a lot of my marker tests are done with Kara my main, main character from my comic I want you guys to be able to see how I handle the markers understand how the markers work and then be able to color characters or people from your own imagination, from your own life. I don't want you to be limited by the blends I happen to use. That's why I push for you guys to swatch your materials. It's why, you know, I will do um, like tests on the paper before I even start rendering. I want to teach you guys as many useful techniques, like genuinely useful techniques as I possibly can. Because I want to bring out the artist in you guys, not just teach you guys how to copy what I do. So now it looks like the pit pen has dried a little bit. I'm going to add in freckles and my sanguine, which is number 188, the tips a little bit funky, so I have to be careful. Now something I like about vellum that I can't achieve when I scan it and assemble it in Photoshop is this sort of ethereal quality we're getting, um, where it's like the vellum seems to glow. And that's just how the light is reflected from the paper underneath and the vellum on top. Um, and your scanner flattens that out and it kind of kills it. And so digital representations of this, other than video, uh, the video actually does is doing a pretty good job of capturing how the original looks to me. Um, digital representations of this technique are not as flattering to the original as the original is. It doesn't do any good to tell you guys this but I'm going to have to tell my blog readers and my Tumblr readers um, that they need to watch the videos if they're genuinely interested in the technique because there's just not any way to properly digitize it other than video. Sorry, struggling to put my markers back. My case is brand new and the elastic is very tight. Um, it hasn't had a chance to loosen up yet. And in case you're looking for case recommendations, I have used Global's pencil cases mm, for like four or five years now. I have several floating around my studio and the only time I quit using them is when I outgrow one and I need a, a larger case. So right now I'm using Light Indigo, which is 220 for shadows on the eyes and Light Indigo is an extremely light blue. It's a beautiful color, but it's very, very light. Um, so it's not showing up for you guys so much, but I promise you it's there. Now, I I have, I usually add a mauve or a, a lilac shadow on skin. Um, and I've been avoiding it, but I think I'm gonna finally bite the bullet and do it here, because I finally have a color light enough and I have a paper where it's not gonna just reactivate. And I could even go a little darker. I'm using 239 Lilac right now. And I might want, I don't have one yet, but I might want a darker uh, color for Caucasian skin shadows. And I'm definitely going to need some darker violets to help shade um, darker skin tones like Hispanic or certain um, Asian skin tones or African or African American or yeah, basically anything but Caucasian I'm going to need a darker uh, violet 
And since tests have gone so well with Kara, I kind of want to do, well, I definitely want to do Naomi, her friend, um, on vellum, because I think that would look even cooler. And she has a dark skin tone, so this will be my first time doing a dark skin tone on vellum. So it's a good thing I purchased a big vellum pad because I'm going to be using it a lot. So since the body of her dress is primarily white, I'm going back to the light indigo I was using on her eyes to put in some shadows. And now you can kind of see, you guys are, cannot see it as well as I can. And uh, for colors this light, you really want to clean off your blender brush because otherwise it's going to get all like pink and I mean, that might look cool. In fact, that probably would look really cool. And I should probably do a technique with that later on where the white is influenced by all these other colors. But for right now, um, I'm just going to focus on one shade in the white and blending that out. And see, by blending it, you can soften some shadows, and that way you have um, you have options as to what kind of shadows you're rendering. You can have sharp, crisp shadows, or you can have soft, diffuse shadows. But this only works on paper with a su surface coating like vellum for these particular markers, because otherwise it gets absorbed too quick for you to be able to do that. So if you're interested in trying this tech blending technique out, keep in mind that um, it really works best on coated papers. In fact, it works too well on the Yubo, and it pretty much just picks up all of the marker entirely if you scrub too hard. Uh, the vellum, it just seems to, to blend it out, which is perfect. Vellum and pit pens seem like a match made in heaven. But that was what I said about water-based markers and vellum. Maybe vellum is just like a great medium for those things we struggle to, to find a use for. Now, um, the same problem I had well, it's not, it's not a problem, but it is a consideration. The same consideration I had um, with the water-based markers is, as this, these are water-based markers, uh, they do make the vellum buckle a little bit. If you um, happen to be putting a lot down in one area. So that is definitely something to be aware of and to take into consideration and to make accommodations for. I think I'm about done with her dress. So I'm gonna move back over into the browns and start her hair and her eyes. Now, if you happen to like my art, if you happen to like um, the way I draw, the way I color things, or the characters I'm drawing, I highly recommend you check out the children's comic I'm working on, Seven Inch Kara. Um, and right now it is a print comic, and the first volume is out. It's about 72 pages of watercolor comic, plus some concept and, um, you know, other sort of stuff. But there's two more volumes coming out. And um, you can find 7-Inch Kara on my website, natosoup.com. Um, and it should be natosoup.com hyphen, oh, um, natosoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic. K-A-R-A is how Kara is spelled. And I've talked about it a few times before, uh, but I... I'm usually so focused on talking about the materials I'm demonstrating or this, that, and another thing that I don't really get a chance to promote my work as much as I should. Um, I am a children's comic artist and illustrator. That is my passion and my focus. Um, my second passion is uh, democratized art education, but I talked to you guys about that a little bit. What that basically means is... Um, I feel like art education 
A should not um, be the sort of thing that can just be cut from a school's budget, just like I feel like math and science and history shouldn't just be cut from a school's budget. Um, I feel like art can enrich and benefit everyone's lives, and being able to render ideas graphically is a fabulous skill to have. Um, It is very useful in many lines of work. Um, And I also don't think that drawing ability is like some magic thing you just are born with or you're not. I was not born with any artistic ability. Um, I don't have a natural eye for things. My eyesight, is, in fact, is terrible and I have trouble seeing, so I have to reference things very carefully. I can't just draw what I see from life. You know, I mean, I, I do tr- to practice, but it doesn't look as good as it, something, you know what I'm, well, maybe not. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, The abilities that I have were achieved through hard work, study, um, looking things up, reading books, being fortunate to know some very skilled people. Um, And I think art is a teachable skill. So I'm trying my hardest to teach you guys what I can. Most of the time it's focused more on um, the materials aspect than the drawing aspect. There are some phenomenal art uh, YouTube's way better than me but if you guys are interested please comment and let me know the sort of stuff you'd like to see me cover I would love to uh, create content that you that benefits you guys that helps you guys um, it just takes a lot of time so if I know exactly what you want I can focus on getting that out so yeah my two obsessions in life are um, comics, specifically making comics, specifically comics for children with female protagonists, um, and uh, art supply slash art education. And I think I think anybody can learn how to draw. I think anybody can learn how to draw from reference, especially. But I also think they can learn how to draw from their imaginations. Um, and I really resent when people say things like, you don't have to be an artist, because that makes what I do sound like it's a bad thing. And I think it's a wonderful thing to be. And I wish people respected the skill set, and I wish people respected people who pursue this as a living more than they do. So when you say things like, well, you don't need to be an artist, you're just contributing to that misconception. And I would really appreciate it if you stopped. All right, so this layer is dry. I can go in with a second layer on her eyes. And I think I'm going to switch colors to something darker for her hair. Um, Right now, I'm using 192, uh, which is Indian red. And it's a lovely reddish brown. But I'm going to go all the way to dark sepia, which is 175. And it is the darkest brown I currently own. It's almost black. And these brushes are great for um, rendering hair in such a way that it has a high degree of shine. Especially if you tend to work small like I do. I don't know um, how well these would work for larger pieces. see me pushing the paper down it's so I can get a clear idea of where the line art is. I'm going to go back with Indian red on her eyes and just sort of blend that sepia out a little bit. There we go. And if I get quiet it's because I'm, when I get quiet it's because I'm double checking against my color swatches. And also thinking about colors I want to buy. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, isn't that how it always is? This light green might be a little dark. We'll see. I'll tell you guys what colors I'm using in a minute. No, that's actually perfect. 
I don't even necessarily have to blend it if I don't want to. Okay, so I am using Light Yellow Glaze 104, which is so light that it's almost like a yellow green, if that makes sense. And May Green 170, which is um, a very fresh, springy sort of green. So once I've done, once I finish this pit pen test, I will have tested all of the, that I can think of, um, minus like Poscas and acrylics, I'll have tested all of the popular um, sort of art markers, types of art markers, because I did alcohol, I did pigment, uh, which is an ethanol alcohol marker. Uh, I will have done water-based and now I will have done India ink water-based. And while alcohol inks work on a wide variety of surfaces, for vellum I'm really finding that the water-based inks, this is like where they really perform well. because one of my complaints about the alcohol inks is they sit on top, they don't, so you're limited by the number of layers you can do, you're limited as to the blending you can do, um, whereas like other papers, uncoated papers, they tend to not work well with uh, water-based markers, even India ink water-based markers, but um, the vellum and the Yupo are working really well for pit pens. And I actually have some, uh, I did a tracing paper test with water-based markers and it turned out okay. Like if you can't afford vellum uh, or if you're, you're shopping, uh, possibilities are limited, then tracing paper will work okay. It's not gonna be as pretty, but it's you can do the same techniques. But I purchased some, I wanna call it like, I purchased some acetate, I purchased um, some artist or designer's vellum, and I purchased, um, shoot, like some rolls of layout paper, which is transparent, and I'm excited to test markers on those as well and see how those are different. And of course, that takes time. And my convention season is ramping up, or it's about to, with Comic-Con in early March. But by the time you guys see this, I'll probably be done with Kami and with MTAC. And then MTAC is right around when Easter is. So um, I'm going to have to to quit recording. Well, no, I can't afford to quit recording. But I have a huge backlog of video. So we'll probably focus on getting the video edited and uh, I'm looking into hiring an assistant to come in and help me maybe like once a week. Cause I spent half my day today doing stuff that I could have taught someone else to do in five minutes. Um, I was digitizing watercolor assets. That's one of my Patreon rewards um, is access to my watercolor digital assets as I create. Well, I don't want to say as I create them, but I'm working on creating a library and I plan on creating more assets and I plan on making those available as downloads to my backers once we've hit a certain level of funding. So if that's something you're interested in, and I'm a watercolor artist, so I, I am always painting and I'm always making assets. So that would be, if that's something you think you'd like to get into or something you enjoy, or you want to add kind of like a watercolor feel to your digital work. Um, I don't know, maybe consider backing just to get access to that. And then when I finished that, and that took a while because I, I had a bunch. I've been slowly working on making a bunch of like, uh, not they're not swatches, they're like uh, samples, I guess, like textures and samples. But I also scanned like all of the papers I have that have like a unique texture because I, I personally find that having a base like that really goes a long way to sell your digital watercolors as being like the real, like a, the physical thing. Um, so I use those kind of papers a lot, those sort of textures a lot. Um, 
gosh, what else I did? I did some house cleaning and then I transferred my pit pens into their new case. And then I transferred my Prismacolors into their new case. And, uh, oh yeah, I wrote an announcement about the Patreon for my Tumblr and then Tumblr ate that. So I had to rewrite it. In fact, it ate it as I was going to click save as draft. So for those of you who are like, you know, you can save that, right? Yeah, well, for some reason, me and Tumblr, that's where we really disagree is save as draft. And then what else did I do? Oh, I stretched two pages and then I penciled two pages, which only I can do uh, for my comic. I'm not gonna pass that off on somebody else. Um, the stretching thing I could teach somebody to do. So yeah, most of my day was filled with important, but doesn't have to be done by me tasks. Okay. Since I've got those yellows out and I want the flowers in the background to also be yellow. I don't know if I want them to be as yellow, orange as her dress. I probably should have started out with what ivory, which is like, it's a cream, but it's a yellowy cream, not a brown cream, which is what I was hoping for, for like skin. <clears throat> Gosh, um, if you have noticed that the tips on your pit pens are fraying, but your pit pens are still full of ink, um, if you check my archives, I should have a pit pen post, like just about pit pens in general, uh, up on natosoup.blogspot.com and uh, in like the additional resources section, there should be, someone kindly did a tutorial demonstrating how you can just like remove the nib with a pair of tweezers and flip it over and replace it. And I have that linked with, with credit to him, of course. But a couple years ago, I was writing about pit pens and I was looking all over for, because I'd heard, I mean, in the sequential art department at SCAD, we had a couple of people who liked pit pens and they were always like, you know, the big complaint is, well, like the brush dies on you. And they were like, no, no, you just got to flip it. But none of them would show, would demonstrate. So, you know, like I'd heard rumors, but uh, I'd never seen it in person. Now, do I want to go with the yellow green of her crown or the yellow yellow. Actually, I'm gonna add some the yellow yellow, the warm yellow. And see if you work quick enough, they'll blend into each other or you can use the lighter color to blend the darker color is what I meant. Anyway, I'm just glad that somebody finally posted a tutorial on flipping your your nibs because, like, I, I don't know. I, I never used pit pens enough before to get to the point where my nibs are looking raggedy. So, I never got to the point where I was willing to risk a pen to experiment. Something else, uh, <laughs> I'm all over the place tonight. Something else regarding marker tests, regarding any of my product tests and the Patreon is that one of the reasons I wanted to have it in the first place was to give you guys some buy-in for what I, what I draw when I do marker tests. Um, since nobody's paying me for do for doing these at this time and I don't have a sponsorship with any particular company and I don't you know I'm just kind of footing all my own bills um, I choose to do Kara because you know it's assets for my comic in the future um, but if you guys are contributing I'm going to be releasing uh, polls and surveys to see what you guys want me to draw and that includes fan art now the problem with fan art um and i'm i will do fan art if you guys request it but i do make a little bit of money off the ads on these videos it's not a lot it um 
doesn't even pay my electric bill. Like it's really like 15 bucks a month, but it's more than nothing. Um, and I can't, I can't put ads on fan art. I'm not going to put ads on, on fan art. So, um, if you guys, I, if you guys send me, say, I don't know, a photo of your dog and you're like, Hey, I paid X amount of money to your patron. Let's say 35. I haven't even listed that as a tier yet. Cause I'm still figuring out what you guys want. And I'm still waiting to hear back from backers, but let's say $35. Um, can you, could you do your next watercolor review with a picture of my dog? as the test subject. Well then, you know, yeah, of course I can. And I'll give you a shout out in the video. And, um, you know, when I'm done, I'll scan it and send it to you. So, you know, you'll get to work on me watching it. You'll get input on what I'm doing. And I'll probably, as part of the process, once I get to that point, I'll probably, um, allow you guys to request exactly the meat not not necessarily the brand but i'm not going to cheat you guys if i know a product is garbage i'm not going to take your money and do a test of your loved one or your pet or your favorite character i'm not going to do that to you um i'll use a decent quality material so you'll get to see me work on something you love just by chipping in and you know what if that doesn't work out we'll figure something else out together. I also want to do um, backer exclusive live streams where uh, backers get to request what I draw and can, for tips, they can um, purchase it as a commission or dictate the media I use. And that's probably going to end up happening a little down the line. I think that is around, I'd have to double check because I don't, I don't have my goals memorized. Um, I think that is like when we hit 30, I start doing, I mean, it's, it's, some of these goals are low because these are things I wanted to do anyway. I just needed to know that you guys, I need to know that you guys are invested too. I've been doing this for six years. People write in all the time. They tend to ask the same questions. So I'm probably going to make an FAQ um, with links to everything. But like they check in and then they check out. And I'm, I'm kind of tired of that being like my life. That being the life of an art supply blogger. Uh, so hopefully... The Patreon will um, help us form a community together and will allow me to um, focus on giving you guys the stuff you want instead of me trying to read your minds and exhausting myself, creating all this content that you don't care about one way or the other. I mean, I'm not accusing you guys of not caring. What I'm saying is like, I want to specifically make things you guys will enjoy. And if there's a buy-in, then I know, then I know you care and I know you're going to stick around. Basically, I have boyfriend issues except with my audience. So like, you know, if you enjoy my videos, but you're like, I'm really tired of her drawing the same girl over and over again, then back my Patreon and you get to dictate what I'm going, well, to an extent, you get to dictate what I'm going to draw. Another like what I had in mind for the backer request live streams is sort of like what I do at conventions except online so we don't even have to like get out of our pajamas if we don't want to and you can also ask me like specific questions about what I'm using or what techniques I'm using um, you can make requests for the style so I can give you demonstrations on that like in my ideal backer request live stream world we're gonna start off with some chibis like what i do at cons and i'll mail those off to the people who bought them and then we'll like progress to maybe do a watercolor or maybe a marker piece that night and people check in and check out and then i post it on youtube after after all of the requests have been met and everything, and people can watch and feel jealous that they <laughs> didn't back and they're not getting cool art. 
you know, that's how I saw it going. Because right now I do a lot of conventions and I'm pretty dang good at drawing on, on the spot and uh, handling like what other people want. So basically like requests. Um, but conventions themselves can be very expensive. You know, the table's like 125. If you need a hotel, that's like 300 for three nights. Uh, then you might be paying parking for the hotel. So that could be like 15 bucks a night. That's what it tends to be, even with the hotel rate. And then you're buying con food, which is often garbage and makes you sick. Um, and you're paying to travel there. So you're flying or you're driving or taking a bus or whatever. And you, you know, you're taking a lot of time off from your other work. So you're possibly losing money from that. Um, and I love doing cons and I love meeting you guys in person and I love drawing for you guys, but I don't want that to be the only way we ever communicate. And I do offer actual commissions. So like, you know, if you'd like to commission my art, but you don't want to be a join the Patreon, um, then check out my website, natasoup.com slash products. I have several types of commissions listed up there. If that is your thing. And of course, no matter how you choose to support me, it is always greatly appreciated. And if you're a crafter who watches my videos to learn, you know, new tricks and tips about materials or to see how they shake out, um, you know, there's just as much reason for you to back as anybody else because, um, you know, I would be interested in reviewing more products that are relative, that are uh, suitable to what you guys are interested in because there's a lot of overlap between like the convention artist market and um, like stampers and crafters. And the reason I have it is just financial and time. Unlike some of your other <laughs> favorite craft YouTubers, I don't, I don't have a sponsorship with uh, Distress. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, Ranger. I don't have a sponsorship with, um, I want to say Cuddlebug, but it's not Cuddlebug. Shoot. Oh, well. I don't have any sponsorships with, um, like stamp companies or stamp stores or what have you, because, um, you know, I'm not going to be demonstrating stamps. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can draw, so I'm going to draw for y'all. Um, so I don't have, I don't have that to help offset the costs the way some of your other favorite crafty YouTubers do. All right, so we are finally kind of nearing the bend. All I have to do left are these embroidered flowers. And I'm using 172 Earth Green. And um, I, I would say this, but I'm not going to go back. So for the, the, the black on her, the trim on her dress, that was the first layer was idanthine, idantharine blue. And then I did, and that is uh, 247. And then I did dark indigo on top of it. And Pit Pen's dark indigo is so dark that it is basically black. So that worked out well. Um, and then I already told you the spring May green. There we go. 170, which is like the green accent on the yellow flowers on her crown and in the embroidery. And the shadow underneath her is that violet, or I'm sorry, lilac I had used on her skin for light shadow. And that's 239. Now the translucency of vellum would lend itself really well to some cute faux stained glass effects, especially on cards where you uh, cut out around where you've attached the vellum to make a window. So it's just vellum, vellum, and they could like put it in the window and the sun would shine through. I mean, uh, these have varying degrees of light fastness and it's marked on the barrel. Um, since my work is pretty much just for reproduction, I scan it and then put it away for the most part. I'm very rarely concerned about light fastness. Although it was an ugly shock to see just how much my water-based markers ran 
and bled together on the Yupo. And for those of you who are wondering, um, pit pens are not refillable. The, the tips are not replaceable, although you can pull them out and flip them over, extending the life of your tip at least. Um, they are fairly inexpensive. They are permanent on most surfaces once dry, although they're not designed to write on plastic the way, say, um, alcohol markers can. So they probably aren't going to work on acetate. No, wait, but they worked on they worked on the Yupo, and Yupo is plastic. So I guess as long as you don't like try to scrub them, like I'm sure if I took a damp sponge to that Yupo, it would wipe entirely off. But I'm not gonna do that. So basically, don't you know? Like I don't think they work on glass. I think they just like wipe right off a of glass, for example. Um, but I know you can use alcohol markers to stain glass. But the problem with that is if you take alcohol, anything. Um, it'll come right off. I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> I lost it. I followed so many rabbit holes. You know, of course, you can ink right over your piece, and it'll all be on one piece, and I'll probably look very cute. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, merge them together in Photoshop. It will not be as cute, but it will be less time consuming and I'll still have the original, which is still pretty dang cute. So I'm doing my best to keep my hand off of areas where I've already applied ink. Um, I have not noticed resist issues with the vellum that one gets with Yupo, but um, I also, you can't wipe, I mean, you can't spray vellum with um, rubbing alcohol and wipe it down to remove hand oils the way you could with Yupo. So um, I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. And I washed my hands before I got started, so that does help, but I mean, you know, we're humans and we produce oils throughout the day. You know, it. I can't just stave off production. If I cared that much, I could wear white glove, like white cotton gloves, but I don't quite care that much. Um, but I also don't want to pick up still damp ink and then transfer it elsewhere, basically mono printing my, my piece. Okay. So, could probably call it done, but I'm gonna go a little bit further. Oh, no, no I'm not, no I'm not. Abort, that's, that's not, nope, because too blue. This green is very gray. I'll just cover it over a little bit. Okay, so that was, uh, <laughs> that was me using, sorry, I wanna show you guys while I talk, me using Faber-Castell pit pens with a brush tip in a rainbow of colors. I believe they have 50 colors, 48 available in their largest set. Me using pit pens on craft vellum paper that I purchased at Michael's. It was very simple, it worked really well. Um, I didn't have any sort of issues. Looks pretty dang good, even without the line art, very cute. Um, I highly recommend this technique. I think you guys ought to give it a shot. I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you for watching my video. I hope it was helpful to you. I would hope it was useful to you. If it was, if you enjoyed it, if you enjoy hearing me ramble on, please leave a like, leave a comment regarding something I said, or I don't know, tip me off to something neat going on in your life. Um, and consider subscribing to my channel for even more content like this. Um, and if you've got a moment, please check out my Patreon because your support helps fund this channel and the blog. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.